So welcome everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number seven. Today is June the 16th, 2022. The, the topic or the, the, the main topic I want to cover for this play shop is really about um, the role of consciousness in healing. So I want to, um, as always, actually just share kind of the overview of what it is that we will be talking about today. And so this is kind of the, um, the agenda for today. So welcome, check in, and then I'll have a short med presence meditation. And then talk about the role of consciousness in heal healing. And then also, now that we know what the role of consciousness is in healing, we're going to talk about how to shift our consciousness so that we can actually maximize the, the healing um, abilities of being in a more expanded consciousness. Okay. <clears throat> so having said that, let's actually come back and do the first part, which is to check in and um, welcome you all. And also any questions, anything that needs to be clarified from last week or the previous six or anything, anything goes. Not really, no, no questions that you can think of. Okay, in that case, I am going to <clears throat> go over um, the next part, which is just to do a presence meditation. So just take a deep breath in. and just let it all go. Take another deep breath in. And let it all go. Take one more deep breath in. and let it all go. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. And to remind yourself to keep this elongated breath like throughout the whole play shop or as if you would like actually, just keep it all the time because when you are in this elongated breathing um, method, it actually relaxes your body. It, like, it, it's very hard to be stressed out when you are breathing, when you're really intentionally elongating your breath. And when you feel that your body is starting to become more relaxed, then set the intention to call back all of your attention. Whatever it is that you have put your attention out to during the daytime, now just call it all back in. And as you breathe in, imagine <clears throat> that all of your attention, all of your energy is coming back inside you. Just like you're breathing in air, in oxygen, that you're also breathing in all of you, the attention that you have sent outside yourself. Call them all back in. And keep on doing that until you feel that you're more present. 
to yourself, to your own body, to who you are being in this moment. And with that, then you can start to open your eyes and come all the way back. Okay, so the next thing that I want to go into is really talking about the role of consciousness in healing. I would like to do that by just introducing some, I would say, miraculous healing um, journeys of other people having experienced that that their own consciousness have a shift. And so they, and whatever it is that their, their own um, illness was, kind of just had a big turnaround. So the first one I would like to talk about is Anita Mujani. And I am quite sure um, you all know who she is because I've mentioned her a couple of times and this is one of her TEDx um, talk about how she um, was, was, let's say, so um, this is way back in 2006. So uh, at around 2006 at that time, Anita was really sick in hospital and he was, and she was um, suffering from end stage of lymphoma, which is cancer of the lymph nodes. So it is quite a lethal um, cancer, kind of cancer. And she's been struggling with that for over four years uh, at that point. And, and she's finally got to the last stage. And the doctors really told her and her family that like, she's not going to be able to make it um, <clears throat> through the night. And probably just in a couple of hours, she won't be not able to keep alive anymore. So it was at that time where everything was kind of almost lost. And she was already in a coma. And, um, and all of a sudden she, um, she described that she had the experience that she's kind of out of her body. Why she thinks that is because she seemed to be able to, um, she seems to be aware of everything that's around her, like 360 degrees. She seemed to be able to know what the doctors are doing, what each and every one of the family members that were near her um, in, the, in the hospital was doing. And not only that, she also knew what her, one of her brother was in, I think uh, her brother was in India somewhere far away trying to get a plane um, to go to Hong Kong, which was where she was. At this stage, she was she was dying in the hospital in Hong Kong. So her family wanted to rush to her. Those that are not in Hong Kong, close to her, wanted to rush to be able to see her for one more time. And she was absolutely aware that that's what her brother in India was doing, just boarding a, a plane to want to come to her. So she was, even though... She was aware that her body was absolutely um, dying, sick and dying in this environment. She was aware of all of these things happening. And, and she was also aware of, um, I think two family members, I forgot which one, I think one of them was a, uh, one of her, fa her father and also another, um, member of her family, I forgot who it was, but those, she was also seeing two of her family member that's already passed on, 
and they were also there by her side. And, and so they, those two of her family members that were already passed on, they kind of started to um, talk to her, to talk her through it. Because what they were trying to tell her was that it's not her time yet. It's not her time to leave this world, this, this life behind yet. But Anita was just her, like, she's done. She's like thinking that, well, my body, it, it, there's so many things wrong with my body. I wouldn't be able to um, get through this. And so um, when she was saying that her two members of the family that is here with her on the other side of the veil kind of uh, prompted her again to check in. So think about this again. And then she kind of shifted to a different consciousness and, and realized that actually because of this incident, because she has this awareness, she um, remembered who she truly is, not Anita Mujani, but actually the divine essence that she truly is. She remembered who she truly is. And she also remembered that she can cure herself, and that she would be able to, um, to be able to actually lift, be able to lift. And so once she realized this, she kind of got to be okay to stick around and not leave. And so after that, um, after that, she actually woke up. After that realization, she woke up from the coma. And within, she, she mentioned that uh, even though she was close to death, but within five days, all of her tumors, because her, her, her um, the lymphoma, like, like her lymph nodes is, is from her neck all the way, almost up to the back of um, the, 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 the root of her spine was just um, all filled with tumors. So within five days, 70% of tumors has, has shrunk already. And so within, after this incident, after about five weeks, she went home. She was able to leave the hospital went home and fully recovered with no cancer in her body whatsoever. And she lived to be able to tell her ex own experience and be able to um, inspire other people, many, many other people as well, as evidence with this text, uh, TED Talks. And her, she wrote a book about it. She. I think she has a podcast and a lot of other activities that she's been doing to inspire other people to not be um, faced by whatever it is that our body may be going through. So this is one example of how our body can heal itself. Um, when there is a shift of consciousness. The shift of consciousness is really shifting from thinking that she is this, this woman, Anita, who has so many different problems and issues with her family and with life itself. And all of a sudden she remembered who she truly is beyond this persona of Anita. And of course, if this were only one incident, then we think we may be able to argue that, wow, that's just one um, kind of one off. However, there are many other examples. This is what happened to Anita um, through a near-death experience. And if you simply just Google or go to to YouTube to and type in near death experience. There are just so many near death experiences. People who um, have gone to the other side briefly and came back, 
And because of that um, experience and be able to um, have a completely different perspective in their life and really make big changes in their life. So, however, because it's near death experience, so it's not something that we can, um, I, like I, I won't encourage anyone to put themselves through such an extreme environment in order to heal themselves. And so I want to talk about another experience, which is uh, the other person I want to talk about is, uh, let me try to get out of this. Sorry. <laughs> no, I don't want to actually see this, this TED talk. Although I highly recommend everybody to go see her TED talk. I actually want to talk about the next person. The next person is um, Lester Levinson. So Lester Levinson is the um, creator of Release Technique, or also known as the Sedona Method. So how did um, Lester Levinson did that? He, well, he, he had a brush with death, but he, he actually, but he, he didn't actually die. He actually, he recovered. So this is, um, this is an excerpt from his website, the Release Technique website that talked about the Lester Levinson story. So I'm, I am just going to um, kind of recap it very briefly for you. However, this, this website, I, will, I actually would be sending you all this, this PDF. It's about 20 pages, so not a very long read and really give you a lot of insights about how he, how Lester, um, without going through the extreme of, of, you know, actually a near death experience that he was able to heal himself fully. So the Lester's story is that he had a heart attack. I think it was his second heart attack. And so a second heart attack and he recovered. And his doctor was telling him that, you know, um, yes, we so, 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 so sorry to, um, to have, you know, have to go through all of that, but you know, you didn't die. So, so that's, this is what the, the doctor was telling him. However, you have to be careful um, now because you're, even though you didn't die, however, um, way back, that's like 40, 50 years ago, at least, they don't really have um, bypass surgery. They don't have all these fancy things, fancy um, procedures that people who suffer from heart attack can, um, they don't really have all of that. Back in those days, if you don't die, then you pretty much have to be very careful about um, <clears throat> how you live your life. So uh, what her, what his doctor told him is that, yes, um, you know, you can go home because there's really not a lot that we can do for you in the, in the hospital. And um, you just have to keep taking the medications that we give you pretty much for the rest of your life and also make sure that you don't exercise too much um, and don't um, go through, don't, don't stress yourself out um, much. So, so um, things like um, sex and um, exercising, those things is out. He can't do that anymore. And of course, he's still alive but you know what kind of life do you have if you don't if you can't even exercise no no more sex nothing like that is pretty much just bed rest and taking medications and coming to to see the doctor very regularly it's not really a good quality of life so when he learned that you know yeah you didn't die buddy but you know you're not going to have much of a life at least not a happy life anyways from now on 
he didn't feel very good about that. But of course, he, he um, took the medications, went home. And he once he got home, though, he and I think he, he took a couple of days to really get adjusted to this new this new life, which is pretty much no fun, just bed rest uh, most of the time. And, and and so he started thinking, say, and he was saying, well, well, I have all these drugs. I can either take all of them and kill myself or I can do something about it. So he decided that, you know, I've got nothing to do, so I must, might as well do something about it. And so he, what he did was starting to look back. This is kind of like a life review, look back on everything in his life and um, all the, the setbacks, um, <clears throat> all the, the the times when he lost a loved one, um, whether they died or whether they um, abandoned him or um, go with some, or didn't choose to, to stay with him. So all these times he started coming with a realization that whenever he is, whenever he, is able to love someone or love something, whether it is um, some his work or um, an event. When he loved doing something, when he loved being with someone, that's when he actually feel happy and healthy. So that was like really um, very. Um, I would say uh, a clarity of, of thinking. He's really discerning that he actually found that. And so he actually went back and reprocessed all of the unpleasant memories throughout his life. And he started to um, feel very different when he released a, um, a negative emotion. He actually felt that when he can go back to an incident in his life where he felt um, that there's something he couldn't let go of, that there's he, he didn't want to accept, when he go back to those incidents and reprocess it and really look at the, the, the same incident from fresh eyes, from um, um, this point of view of letting things go and also uh, forgiving the other party and forgiving himself as well. And when he, when after each time he was able to, um, he was able to process, reprocess something that he was able to also um, feel a shift in his own body. And yes, there's been, uh, yeah, I, I noticed the, the, the chats that he was told to go home because he, he, he's going to die. Um, there's different versions of it, though. He, he wasn't told that he's going to die. He was told, he was told in no uncertain term <clears throat> of how long he'll be able to live. So it really depends on how he, um, like if he's able to just be able to rest and not exert himself and, and all of that. So he, he, like he may be, who knows how long he's going to be able to live. So yes, um, so he started to reprocess all of his um, the past emotions and and I think it took him maybe about a month or two to really feel a lot better. And then he didn't stop there though. He actually stopped, he actually keep going because he was, um, it took him about two months to, to feel a big shift in his own health and mood, but he didn't stop there. He actually went further and he got to the part where 
he recognized that all of his of the things that he's been doing is really motivated by fear of death. So he actually looked in inside this fear of death. <clears throat> and I and I think it took him for another month or so to actually go to the part where he no longer fear death. And when you no longer fear that. So what else is there to trip you up? There's really not a lot of triggers. That's when he actually felt that his, he's fully recovered, his whole body. And he went on, of course, to live decades more after this, um, this three months of deep introspection and reprocessing his, his whole life. So this is another incident of a person who is very motivated, I would say, because he was told that, you know, in no uncertain term that, you know, yeah, you, we don't know how long you're going to live, but, um, and, but if you don't want to die right away, then don't stress yourself in anything, with anything, and just basically bed rest and, and take your pills, and that's about it. That's, that's the extent of your life. From that to being able to overcome all that. And so it's, it's actually a very interesting story to read because he, I, he wrote several books about it. The, um, this PDF that I, I looked at, it's only on his website and it's, it's a very shortened version of it. But just from this 20 pages of sh shortened version of it, you can already um, kind of get the gist of the um, what he put himself through in order to to shift his own consciousness, to shift his, his own mindset from being identified with Lester Levinson, with all um, with um, you know. A survivor of heart attack and don't know whether he's going to live um, for how long. And to be knowing that he is not just this person, but he is also all the other people in his life that seem to have created these um, negative scenarios in his own life. So he really made that shift of uh, being able to understand that he's not just this body, even though he has a body, he is way more than this body. So these are kind of two person that, that is a very good example of a shift of consciousness, being able to completely heal just, just from the shift of consciousness. And I also want to, to um, talk about innate as well. Innate is something that the bot that um, Cryon has mentioned, Cryon is channeled by Lee Carroll mentioned that our body has something that is called innate. So our body is actually a, um, It's, it's, it's an, an intelligence. It's not just a hunk of meat. It's, it's more than that. It's way more than that. The body has an intelligence and he calls it innate. And this innate works with our consciousness. If our consciousness is at a, let's say, let's say at a 3D level, the body will work at a 3D level. But when we can shift from a 3D level to, let's say, a, a 5D level, our body will be able to work at a 5D level as well. And a 5D level body is very different from a 3D level um, body. A 3D level, meaning that we actually ident identify with our body we think that we are our body. And when you are at the, the level of um, 
your body this not a lot of things that you can do so you can't really control the body but when you know that you are more than the body and you truly believe that you are more than the body um not that the body is anything is 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 not worthy i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the body that is not as um precious as the soul or consciousness it is just that the body is something that is very different from our soul from our consciousness it has an intelligence <clears throat> that is something that our consciousness can work through so at some point we'll be able to um, just think of something and our body would be able to manifest that. If, if we think of, hey, today I want to look like this, then it will be like this. And tomorrow, hey, I want to drop 40 pounds and have my hair, uh, have my facial features differently. Um, maybe bigger eyes or uh, <clears throat> um, a different shape of nose or mouth. I can do that. I can actually shape, shift the body. The body has that ability, not at a 3D level, but at a, I don't even know at which um, dimension of consciousness our body would be able to do that. But I think maybe when, maybe 5D, who knows, that we will have a lot of that. And definitely when we get to, I think um, seventh dimension, that's when um, having a body is optional. When we get to certain consciousness, we don't really have a, a body that we know of right now. We may be able to shift into just an off. So our consciousness can inhabit outside of, can be outside of our body. So, so back to um, healing and consciousness is that at different level of consciousness, our body heals at different levels. At um, at a three D level. The body works through, has, a, diff, has a, a certain mechanics. But when you shift your consciousness level to be, to know that you are more than this, then you can do things like completely heal your body um, from the, having, um, you know, end stage lymphoma to be completely cancer-free in five weeks time. That is absolutely doable when you are operating from a different level of consciousness. Because your body actually has in that intelligence to come to be able to do all that, <clears throat> no, no problem at all. So now of course the, the next thing is how do we shift our own consciousness? without um, going through extremes, without getting end stage lymphoma or getting a heart attack and being sent home with no uncertain terms whether you're going to live for, you know, three weeks or three months. So, so how do we actually shift our consciousness? Um, the first thing that we know of is really that I want to talk about is, um, let me just share this. Okay, so I don't want this, but I want to get back to the thing. Okay, so now we talked about this. To shift our consciousness, the first thing I want to talk about is really perspective 
and identity. So perspective, I already mentioned that when we um, think of ourselves as being this personality with, and we identify with this body, so we have a certain kind of thinking that is limiting us. So we're kind of in this box and, and in this box with only one perspective. If we look at the stories from Anita and also from Lester, is that they got to the part where they understand, they have a an understanding that they are more than this body, that they are more than their own, who they think they are. They, they have gone beyond their identity. When they can make that perspective change, that is when they can shift their own consciousness. So if we look at those examples, then we know those are the two things that we really need to look at when we want to shift our own consciousness. So I, I actually want to do a process with all of you to, to really um, play with this changing perspective and changing identity. Okay, so ready to play? <clears throat> so I'm actually going to <laughs> thanks. I'm actually going to uh, shift in perspectiveness meditation. So before we begin, I want you to select either a person or um, situation that you want to get some healing around, a relationship or a situation. So just select one. Uh, so just select, make that selection. I'm going to do relationship. Is this of course. <laughs> of course, yes. So, so, so relationships. So, select that person. Okay. <clears throat> so, or if it's um, something like you can you can select something like um, let's say your relationship, your career, for example. So, or you can select something like your relationship with money or your relationship with um, the government or with the world. So kind of those, those things. So just pick one. Nobody has to know what it is, but just pick one, okay? And when you have done that, then let's, um, <clears throat> let's start this. So just take a deep breath in. And let it all go. Take another deep breath in. And let it all go. Take one more deep breath in. And let it all go. And continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing. And continue to allow your own body to relax as much as possible. And when you have relaxed your body, and you feel that your body is more relaxed. Then I want you to shift your focus into your heart area. And simply choose to feel unconditional love in your heart.
and imagine that you can breathe in unconditional love. And as you breathe out, let go of anything that does not support unconditional love in your body in this moment. Feel love, feel unconditional love for yourself. And just allow this unconditional love to completely surround your body inside and out. And if you haven't already, then close your eyes. Allow yourself to simply sit in a comfortable position with your eyes closed and imagine, and simply imagine this. Play, imagine as best as you can. Imagine that you are going to walk into a cafe. It can be a place that you have been to before, or if you wish, you can simply imagine a completely new location where you have never been to, and you are free to create this place to look exactly as you prefer it to look. And before you walk in, Set the intention that you are going to meet the person that seems to be the person that is giving you this. If you are doing a relationship, that you're going to meet the person that is the relation that you're in. And if you are meeting an event, some other issue, then imagine that that event or issue has a face that it can be personified. And however you want to personify that event or issue is absolutely up to you. And as you open the door, walk inside that cafe and sit down at the table to meet the person in the relationship or the person that represents that event or issue for you. Imagine meeting them in this cafe, sitting across from them. Is really imagine seeing them and noticing them. Feeling what you feel in your heart in this moment. And I know that there are lots of emotions coming up for you. And I would like to remind you to truly fill yourself with unconditional love for yourself. all the feelings that you're feeling right now and also send that unconditional love to the other person And in your 
imagination, whatever it is that you would like to say to the other person or to the person of sonification of the issue that you want to get more clarity, whatever it is that you would like to say. Then say it right now. Speak your mind. Just in your imagination. So anything that you want to say is absolutely perfect. Allow yourself to say everything that is on your mind. Just say. Unload yourself. Say all that you needed to say in order to feel at peace for this moment. And when you have said everything that you want to say, you need to imagine that you can shift yourself out of your own body. Just imagine that you can. And you can shift your perspective up from out of your own body. And you go over to the other person side and imagine that you can actually go inside the body. and be in their body. Feeling what they feel. Seeing the whole relationship from their side, from their perspective. Being able to feel what they are feeling as they are sitting right across from you. But you're able to be in their shoes, in their clothes, in their body, to be in their perspective, from their perspective, to see this relationship or this issue or this event from completely different perspective.
when you have had a chance to see the relationship, the issue, or the event from a different perspective. And imagine that you can float out of the other's body again. And come back to your own body. And when you come back to your own body, then you can take a deep breath in. And then all go. And when you're ready, open your eyes. Okay, welcome back everybody. Any interesting comments? I, realization? I think it's really, that's a really powerful exercise. And what I really uh, what I really liked was to be able to personify like it wasn't a relationship person that I was dealing with so I was to be able to personify a thing like presents it in a different way already so I really appreciate that that's very powerful that's very powerful thank you for your feedback thank you it's interesting for me. It was difficult when I went in my daughter body. Mm -hmm. I still thinking like myself. I still cannot get in her um, what she wants from me. I was trying, <laughs> repeating like uh, some of her sentence, but I didn't see like I'm inside of her. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't feel that. I can make a suggestion because I've, I've this, you know, mother-daughter relationship, that's a topic that I've been <laughs> working with for a while for personal reasons. So Imagine you are, like, instead of meeting your daughter, imagine you are meeting a younger version of yourself. Because you, like, how much do we actually know what's going through the head of our children? They're really not. Um, is to remember but you know yourself when you were younger. So imagine yourself, imagine you're actually meeting yourself at the age of your daughter. So, because I am pretty sure at that age, you were not thinking like you're thinking right now. So, it's, so it may not be exactly the same, but it's, it's a start. Yeah. It's interesting, when I was in the age of my daughter, my mom, she, she gave me a lot of advices. She was like a dictator, but I accepted that, you know, even though I could say that I don't like it, but um, Somehow, I was like in a time I find myself that I listen at that suggestion and I did the way she asked me. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how well did that work for you? The, 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 another suggestion as well is um,
do it another time. So don't just do it once. There's to repeat this. So when you repeat it, here's me. When you repeat it again, you actually get more insight. Okay, thank you. And it becomes easier to get out of your own thinking. Because the, the, the issue is that you're thinking like you and she's thinking like her. So that's where that. So the more you can get out of your own thinking and start to look at this relationship from someone else's point of view, the more you would be able to get why they behave the way they behave towards you. So do it a um, few more times. And like I actually did this with um, an issue and, it's an, and it is really interesting. Like it, each time I go back to it, it's it actually starting to resolve more and more and more. So then it, yes, it was, the first time was really, oh my gosh, completely different perspective. The next time though, it's, um, I get more out of it. So you, well, the more you, you go back in, you understand more of the things that you didn't understand before. And that, that shift. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other? Yes, can I ask? So you're saying when you're in that other person, you got to think what they could be thinking, right? Not what you would want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're trying to look for ways to understand what they are thinking. But, uh, <clears throat> when you're doing this with a relationship with money, how does that work? Um, I, can, I can help with that. <laughs> sure. Go ahead. That's, that's what I did. I did it with money. And uh -huh. I, I, I ended up asking for um, release from the fear and release from the insecurity that I know that I'm, I'm going to be looked after. And I also know that I can manifest what I need. Mm -hmm. So I, I just asked for release, release from that, that I'm not going to involve my focus on that anymore. Mm -hmm. What did you say, Sherla? Sherla? Um, that I, I asked I asked to not be fearful about the money situation, not to be fearful. And I asked that, that my any insecurity around that be released, I'd be released from that, knowing that I can manifest anything that I need and that I'm, I'm going to be looked, I've been looked after all my life, right? I, I'm in abundance. So knowing that I'm gonna be okay, regardless if I have no money, I don't even need it. So I, I just want to have no focus on that anymore. That's not gonna be a focus of my intention. So I ask for acceptance of the situation the way it is and release of it. Release of any fear around it, any insecurity around it. So you're saying if you need more money uh, for some particular case, you would get it. I, I may not need. I may not need money. What do I? I, I money is just what it can, what it can buy, right? Yeah, but supposing like I have a situation where uh, my sister is going to be visiting in September, and uh, I would need more money to 
be able to take them around to do things with them. And set, so an, intention, set an intention that, that you be provided with abundance when your sister comes. Put out an yeah. intention that the universe is going to provide for me when I, my sister is here. Sorry. Help me yeah. out here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so if I need money in general to pay my bills and everything, so I have to just ask universe to provide me in you know, all my needs. Yeah. It's it would be really interesting if you revisit this this process to meet money. Because I remember I did this process with money. It was it was quite interesting. <laughs> the first time I saw money, the money looks like a, an alien, like with a <laughs> beak. It was like, what the heck? <laughs> That's my personification of money. That explains a lot. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah. Well, I was picturing bundles of money. <laughs> I, uh, mine was mine was a big face, was a big round happy face, and its hair was all dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Oh my gosh, you guys are cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, you can can um, use this process for relationships, well, relationships with money. So. <laughs> Mm -hmm. the, the the thing to remember is when you go over to the other side is to really let go and allow whatever thoughts come in to to like do your best to let go of of being yourself for for a couple of uh, minutes to, to just Hey, <clears throat> imagine you are not you, that you are actually just a, um, just a consciousness that's, that has an opportunity to be in someone else's body, to listen in on their thought process. So when you're there, just be completely open to whatever information comes in. So you'd be surprised at what you will hear, what, what comes in for you. Because when you um, set it up like that, when you set it up to be not yourself, to allow, so you give yourself permission to be the other person, then um, different thoughts will start to come in. So should I sit, relax, and wait what's going to come through me when I'm in a different body or I'm in a body of money? Or I should create the reaction of money, money toward me or creation of create um, reaction of my daughter toward me when I'm in, inside body. Or should I just sit and relax and it's just both. let it be? It's both. You have to be relaxed. You have to, you have, to have no expectation. But you also have to create as well. Um, it's like, so just imagine as well. Imagine that you um, were the other person or thing or event. How will they react to what you told them? Because um, the first thing, to is you say everything that you want to say. So then imagine you are the other person. How would they feel after they, they heard you say all that, all those things to them? Just be open to imagine what their reaction, what would actually go through their mind. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. It could be all negative things, right? Because 
That's the pattern that we know. That's why I, I, um, I that's why I have, you know, unconditional love first, because um, we hear like the, the, the intention of that meeting is really to understand, like to, to be in different perspective. It's not about throwing blame to each other. It's really to understand. No, I'm saying the other person uh, reaction, what you might want to feel is you're expecting all the negatives to come up. That's what I'm saying. Okay, then allow that to come up then. If that is what uh, what shows up. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Um, and for me, my, I see my experience is a little bit different uh, from you all. Um, it is my brother who's younger than me and um, he's not doing well and he's in the hospital. And um, so I started dealing with him and um, he'd been selfish all his life. I mean, extremely selfish. And, um, and it really what comes to me just... Uh, I just washed all his selfishness. I mean, like, uh, until he got sick and then, um, and then the whole thing is just completely changed. Just, um, it just absolutely just love and surrender and, uh, and just peace and quiet. And, and in fact, even I just dozed off. And it's all is really coming is just, uh, it's forgiveness. I don't know is that from his side or from my side, but it was just absolutely peace. Wow, okay. That's Josh. beautiful. That's the transformation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. That can happen too. That will be mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. And any other comments? Okay, okay, wait. In the case, let's move on. Um, so the next thing I would like to talk about is acceptance and love. And also, these the 16 inches, 32 inches, and um, we, we, I don't think we have time to go through all of them, but um, I want to introduce them. Maybe next time I can do more on these areas. So it's really, how do we shift our consciousness as well? The, the other thing that we that is really powerful in shifting consciousness is really acceptance and love. So um, I know I've done some acceptance and love meditation with you guys that I want to actually just re-emphasize that a lot of times when we struggle with a particular issue, um, or a particular relationship is because we don't want to accept what is. We don't, we don't want to accept the reality of the relationship. We want it to be something else. We want it to be what we want it to be. And whenever you resist what is, um, it's, it makes it hard to shift the relationship. It is when you actually accept what is and know, okay, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do to, and, and you just let go of resisting the situation and come completely let go. And I don't mean you let go because you want to shift something. Hey, I want to shift it. And I know that I have to let go. So I am going to let go. That does not count. You have to get to the point where I, you truly want to let go. 
even if nothing will ever change, you still let go and you just accept what is. And that's what I mean, is um, no agenda. You just let go. You just accept the relation as is. And when you accept the situation, relationship, event, issue, whatever it is, like, like I, I think the biggest shift that I have in my own consciousness is when I stop um, trying to change the world or try, trying to change someone else. Because I know that you know, I cannot change someone else. I cannot change what is outside of me. The only one I can change is myself. And that is the truth. And the thing is, when you get to the point of accepting what is and accepting that there are some things in life you cannot shift and to simply accept it. And once you make that shift, um, it actually will start to shift. But you truly have to get to the point of accepting the reality as it is and stop fighting it because every it's like every time you resist something there is an uh, equal and opposite um, energy that you invariably created to keep whatever the situation or relationship as is so it's, it's like you, you're kind of in a, a loop and the only way out of the loop is to just accept what it is and don't try to change whatever it is that's outside of yourself and simply start to look within yourself and change how you see it and, and also look at. So you are the one that created every issue, every relationship, every good relationship you create every bad relationship you also create. So when you accept your own creation, because everything is your own creation, your life is your own creation, your, the, your relationship with your parents, your relationship with your siblings, with your children, all are your own creation. And when you accept your own creation and not, not try to fight it, just, uh, yes, I created this. And ask yourself, next question is, why did I create that? What, what is it that I need to learn from this? So when I create something, then there's something to learn. And the, when you um, just get with learning what it is that you needed to learn out of it, then you start to shift yourself. And when you shift yourself, then everything outside of you has to shift as well. And it may shift to something that you prefer, or it may not. You don't have any control over that. You, all you can do is shift yourself. And, and when you, and that's why it's, it is about acceptance and it's also about love. You love your own creation, whether it brings you a bad um, experience or a good experience, you have to just give it love. Not love, I want to create more of the bad things, but love and that, oh, me at a certain consciousness created this so that I can learn from it. So love that creation. And when you really learn to love your own creation, love yourself, and um, be able to see this, whatever it is that you've created from a different perspective, then um, you will start to shift yourself and shift what is as well. So and I want to talk a little bit about um, what 16 inches is. I think all, all I have time today is to really get to about 16 inches. So 16 inches, I've done some meditation with you all, um, 16 inches. So 16 inches, if you 
think of like your own head as being maybe around 12 inches, so about four inches above that. So, so it's another head plus a little bit above you. That is the fourth dimension. So when you focus your energy and expand your energy to 16 inches above, then you start to be able to tap into the fourth dimension consciousness as well. Um, so how do you know that you, you are there is this feeling that you are just, it's like you are outside of your own body. And I actually suggest that you all do meditation, focusing your energy 16 inches above, because when you can start to um, expand your own energy out, to 16 inches above, you naturally get a different perspective. When you start to um, look beyond your own body, it's just much easier for you to get a different perspective. Um, so 16 inches, so that is, and um, so 32 inches is, is the fifth dimension. So thirty-two. So that's kind of the um, fifth dimension. And when you when you're in the fifth dimension, it's you're definitely out of your own body, and you feel this sense of oneness. It's like you feel that you are with, that you are everyone else as well. So that's kind of the, the, the next step up. And then 64 inches is, is the sixth dimension. And in sixth dimension, what it feels like is nothing. It's a void. It's like a nothingness. It's a very peaceful nothingness. Um, so next week we'll, we'll get to experience that. So this week, I just want to talk about 16 inches and encourage all of you to, to do that, to start to, as much as possible, practice that. Um, yes, we can visit fifth dimension, we can visit sixth dimension. However, start with fourth dimension. If you can master fourth dimension, if you can get yourself to 16 inches above, to expand yourself to that, then and, and become stable with that, then the other two will be much easier. Um, it's not just about living that in 16 inches when you are in meditation. It's get to the point where you become stable at 16 inches then you, it's much easier for you to have a different perspective and be able to shift your own consciousness out of being who you, your personality is and, and that box that you have built for yourself. So that's, that is all I want to cover because I want to actually leave time for meditation. <laughs> I know we've been meditating quite a bit today. Um, 